So good afternoon. Um, I have a couple of slides which I really want to use, I want to go through quickly, really to kind of spur your questions. I would much rather hear your questions about kidney transplant than kind of answer the questions that I have. But I do this a little bit and I get some common questions, so hopefully this will at least spur some discussion. When we talk about kidney transplant compared with dialysis, um, di dialysis does a lot of what the kidney does, although having a transplant kidney in the body does a lot of these things better. So in terms of be being able to make urine, in terms of being able to filter toxins and control acids, these are things that your dialysis does just, just like transplant does. But there are a whole host of things that are not done by dialysis that really is where transplant comes into its own um, in terms of some of the uh, uh, metabolic processes in the kidney, the vitamin D, the blood production that you guys may take Aranesp or Epigen or Procrit for. But really what I want to kind of focus on are the last two, which is the ability to function continuously so that we no longer have to squeeze two days worth of kidney function into a three-hour session. And also the responsiveness to body changes, what we also call auto-regulation. And what I mean by this is if you're on dialysis, if you go to the machine, the machine has no idea if you've been drinking less or drinking more or maybe you've been sick and so you haven't taken in as much fluid. And so we as nephrologists, we as dialysis technicians and dialysis units have to make a guess. And those guesses are not always 100% right. And so we will take off too much or too little fluid. When you have a transplant and the kidney is in the body, it does exactly what your native kidneys normally do, which is minute by minute, second by second, it is assessing how much fluid you have on board, what toxins are on board, and it matches its function to what you need. And that's, I think, goes a long way towards why people feel so much better with a transplant than they do on dialysis. And that even the best dialysis, I think, uh, is, is not, it doesn't uh, meet up with the best of, uh, with, with, with even an, uh, an average transplant. When we talk about uh, patients who get transplants, the first thing that we talk about is quality, uh, quality of life. Okay, um, It's easier to travel, people have more energy, and this can come from a lot of things, but I think most notably it comes from the fact that when you're on dialysis, with a very good dialysis, you may get 15% of your normal kidney function. With a transplant, we expect you to get 50 or 60% of your normal kidney function. Um, and so you have a much greater ability for the kidneys to do all of the things they need to do. The reason I put this slide up is not because it's a random slide, but because I challenge you to pick out the transplant patient in this, in this group. Um, and in fact, it is this guy here. He got his transplant at 72, and he decided to go whitewater rafting in Alaska at 74, something he certainly couldn't have done on dialysis. He also went zip lining, but the picture he sent me about that, he looks absolutely terrified. So I don't show anybody that. The other thing about transplant, and this is even more important, is you're not just living better, but you're living longer on average. And this is rarer in medicine, I think, than, than most people really appreciate. When I got into medicine, I thought I would be saving lives and extending lives. And a lot of what medicine does is make people feel better, and that's important. But it's especially gratifying, I think, both to us and to the patients, when we can actually prolong life. And what this shows you is in the red, you see at any given age what the average additional lifespan is for a person on dialysis. So that if you are 50 years old and on dialysis, the average expected lifespan, and clearly there are differences here, um, but the average expected lifespan is about eight years. Compared with the healthy U.S. population, if you're 50, you can expect to live 30 more years or so. And with transplant, we, get you, we go from eight years up to about 18 years of expected additional life. So people live longer in general with transplants. And that's true really out at least into the mid-70s, okay? If you're asking me at 78 or 79, will a transplant make me live longer? I'm not sure that I have a good answer for you on that. It'll probably make you feel better, but I can't say that it's gonna make you live longer. It is important how fast you get the transplant. Okay? Dialysis, well, it keeps you alive. And let me be clear about this, because I, I talk about this and I have patients, they go back to their dialysis doctors and they say, Dr. Gilbert told me dialysis is killing me. It's not. It's keeping you alive. But dialysis also changes the body. Okay? And the longer you're on dialysis, the more changes happen. And these are changes to the blood vessels, changes to the heart, which you heard Dori Shaktal talk about. And what this shows you is that for people who get transplanted before they're ever on dialysis, they live longer on average than if they're on dialysis for a few years, okay? So getting a kidney sooner is important to how well this kidney ultimately does. And again, that's a common question I get is how long are these kidneys gonna last me too? 
not only is being on dialysis bad for you when you get a transplant, it also means that the kidney itself tends not to last as long. So again, if we say how long does the kidney last if, you're, if you get it before you're on dialysis, it does very well. Not nearly so well if you're on one year or more than two years of dialysis. And that's something to keep in mind. There's no point where you say, uh, it's too late for me, okay? We want to get you off dialysis. We want to get you a transplant sooner. But there's no point where you should say, uh, it's been five years. I should just give up. That's, that's not what I'm trying to say. It's simply we should do everything we can to get you a transplant as soon as we can. When we talk about kidney transplants, there are really two flavors. You have living donor kidneys, okay, kidneys, so, someone who has donated one of their two kidneys to you. And you have deceased donor kidneys. They used to be called cadaveric kidneys. People didn't like receiving kidneys from cadavers, so we call them deceased donors now. Um, but these are people who have died and donated one of their two kidneys. Whether you get a living donor kidney or a deceased donor kidney, we always transplant just one kidney. Um, so it's not a question of, oh, you can only get one from a living donor versus two from a deceased donor. In terms of the differences, let me cut to the chase, living donor kidneys do better, okay? In terms of the, the number that function immediately, almost every living donor kidney starts working right away before we've even completed the surgery. With deceased donor kidneys, most of them work right away, but about a third of the time, people may need to go back on dialysis because that kidney coming out of someone who's died, being put on ice for some period of time, and go going through another process to be put into the recipient, it shocks the kidney, it stuns the kidney, and it takes a little bit of time for that kidney to wake up. In terms of how long the kidney lasts, and again, there are lots of things that go into this number, but generally living donor kidneys last longer. The average time for a living donor kidney is actually more about 15 years. Uh, I just saw some, some new data on this. Whereas for a deceased donor kidney, the average time for a deceased donor kidney is about 10, 10 or 11 years, okay? Now that is not an expiration date, okay? In fact, my personal record for a patient is someone who's now going on her 39th year with a kidney transplant, and she got a deceased donor kidney. So these kidneys can absolutely last a good long time. In terms of the amount of immune suppression that you need after the transplant, you need less immune suppression with living donor kidneys. Here's the real key to me, though, is that the time to transplant. We talked about the longer that you're on dialysis, the, 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 the worse the outcomes tend to be. And with a living donor kidney, we can do that transplant within a couple of months. We work you up, we work your donor up, and we get going, okay? Because we have so many people who are looking for transplants, nationally there are now over 100,000 people on the wait list waiting for kidneys, it's going to take a few years to get to the top of that list. And in this area, that tends to be on the three to five year uh, range. And then finally, it's convenient, right? Living donor kidney, when you want to do it, when your donor wants to do it, that's when we'll do it, we'll schedule it. For a deceased donor kidney, you've got to wait for that call in the night. I always get asked, you know, do we give out pagers or things like that, but everybody has cell phones now, so we actually, we, we just find a way, we make sure that we have a good contact number for you. What can you expect after a kidney transplant? Well, typically, if everything goes smoothly, you're in bed that day, but you're, you're the day of the surgery, but you're having dinner that night, and you're up and walking around the next day. And if you're not, we push you to do that. Um, typically, a hospital stay will be about five days if everything goes smoothly, and then you go home. When you go home, you're not going to feel 100% ready to, do, to, to run a marathon. Um, typically, it takes about four weeks to feel back to yourself. And the most common things that I hear from patients is that they have difficulty sleeping, that they are, don't have quite their, their same appetite, and that their energy isn't what they're used to. Um, and then at four weeks, and it's amazing because it happens almost like that, those things t tend to improve. In terms of a return to work, Four to eight weeks is something to look for. Um, again, if you have a very physically demanding job, it may be longer than that. But especially if you're doing paperwork, desk work, things like that, it, it's going to be a little bit shorter. And then time to full physical activity, well, it depends on what your full physical activity is. If you're like me, I'm a little bit of a couch potato. Not too long to get back to that. If you're into heavy-duty exercise and running and things like that, we're probably talking about six months or something like that. What is your lifestyle going to be like? That tells you kind of the bare bones, but w what are the differences between dialysis and transplantation? With dialysis, if you're a young woman, if you're looking to get pregnant, I used to say it was impossible, and then I had a patient who actually managed to carry a baby to term on dialysis, but it is almost impossible to carry a baby on dialysis. With a transplant, you can get pregnant, you can have a child. It requires a little bit of careful monitoring with the medications, but it can be done. In terms of your activity on dialysis, it's limited by the need to go to dialysis. It's limited by fatigue after dialysis. For post-transplants, really after three months, 
We don't have a lot of restrictions. A lot of people come into me and they think that they're going to be kind of like the boy in the bubble and they can't touch and they have to wear masks and gloves. That's not the case. I pretty much guarantee that at some time in the last couple of months you've walked right by someone who's received a kidney transplant and didn't even know it because they look just like anybody else. In terms of travel, travel on dialysis is a little bit tough. You have to arrange dialysis where you're going. If you're going outside of the country, you pretty much can't do it at all because insurance doesn't cover that. For us, with a transplant, after about a year, you're pretty much free to travel where and when you want, just as long as you bring back pictures to us. In terms of the diet, I don't have to go through the details of the, of the dialysis diet for you guys. You guys know more than I do um, just how tough this is. I get asked, what, what is the most common dietary restriction after transplant? And it's that people put on weight after a transplant because they're eating all the stuff that they couldn't eat on dialysis. And ice cream seems to be the number one thing that you can't have on dialysis, but you have after a transplant. We like you to be careful of raw foods for the first few months because, again, we are blocking your immune system. You can't have grapefruit juice. I have yet to meet the patient who says that's a deal breaker for them. But because it interferes with some of our medications, we tell them that. Some of the medications still cause problems with potassium, and I know you guys have problems with potassium at times on dialysis. It's not true of everybody, but sometimes we do ask people to still watch their potassium after a transplant. Biggest thing I think people hear about transplant, they say, oh, I'm going to be taking a double handful of pills after transplant. But let's, let's, let me ask you this, and you can answer for yourselves. Are you on blood pressure pills? Do you take Aranesp or Procrit or Epigen? Do you take vitamin D or vitamin D analog? Do you take Sensapar? Are you using phosphate binders? These are all things that we can potentially stop after transplant. Are we adding medications? Yes. You're going to be on at least two, if not three, drugs to block the immune system. And then for the first few months after transplant, we give you medications to prevent infection. But really, after you're six months or 12 months out, we're talking about two immunosuppressives, maybe three immunosuppressives. And I would say overall, it tends to be a wash, okay? We're taking away pills, we're adding back pills. But it's not a big increase in your pill burden. And that's really where I wanted to stop. There's certainly a lot more stuff that I can talk about with, with transplant.